only about an hour and a half away from Madrid and Barcelona by train. Zaragoza is the fifth largest city in Spain and is generally much less overrun with tourists than some of the more famous Spanish vacation destinations. This city is absolutely overflowing with history and culture though, so let's see what sort of wonderful things are part of life here in Zaragoza. I'm Kaylee. And I'm Josh, and this is Expats of Where Explores, the channel that brings you information and experiences from foreigners living all around the world. Although it is talked about less than some of the larger neighboring cities, Zaragoza is a Spanish gem known for its dazzling architecture, thriving cultural traditions, and delicious local foods. Around here, there's no shortage of museums where you can see all of the archaeological and cultural wonders to be found. The rich history of this city dates back thousands of years, even before the first emperor of Rome named it after himself and turned this into a bustling hub of ancient Roman life. The city boasts a fascinating blend of different culture and historical traditions, with Gothic, Baroque, and Moorish architectural traditions blending together in the buildings like Losail Cathedral and the Al Jafariya Palace. These monuments of history form part of the Mudejar architecture of Aragon, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The most famous landmark of Zaragoza has got to be the Basilica of Our Lady of Pilar, a Baroque church that has been at the center of life in the city center since it was built in 40 AD, making it the oldest church dedicated to the Virgin Mary. There really are a, just an infinite number of stunning things to see here in Zaragoza, and it's definitely a history buff's dream city. But that doesn't mean that it's lacking in modern amenities and activities. In addition to the modern shopping malls around the city, there's also a lively nightlife scene in the downtown area of El Tubo, with tapas bars being a particular local favorite. There are many different neighborhoods around Zaragoza geared towards various lifestyles, as the downtown or university districts are lively with pubs and restaurants, while areas like Torero have lots of green spaces and a more relaxed feel that might suit people with pets or kids. If you're looking for a place to move with a family, Zaragoza can be a great option as there are many great public schools and four international schools, two that are English-Spanish bilingual, one French, and one IB. The healthcare here is also quite accessible as there are several hospitals and clinics around the city where basic treatments fall under the well-respected Spanish universal healthcare system. You can also get supplemental private insurance to help cover anything that does not fall under the public plan. The city center here is a walkable neighborhood of beautiful old buildings and many of the main attractions are within a few blocks of each other here in the old town. Trains, trams, and buses can get you just about anywhere else you need to get around here with local tickets only being about 125 and inner city tickets generally staying below 20 euros. The public transportation system in Zaragoza is generally considered to be quite effective and can make this city of nearly 700,000 people feel very connected making it easy for people in every neighborhood to access the amenities of the city center. Besides that though, walking and cycling are popular ways to get around and enjoy the beautiful weather. Zaragoza is home to plenty of Spanish sunshine, having average highs around 90 degrees in the summer with temperatures staying above 37 degrees and very few rainy days throughout the year. With this warm climate, it's certainly convenient that the city was built right on the river and there are plenty of other lakes and pools around to help cool you down. While you're walking around enjoying all that nice weather, it's good to keep in mind that Zaragoza is not a city with a, a large population of foreigners and most of the people you come across will be Spanish speakers. Some English is spoken here, but less so than in other major cities, so it'll be very useful to learn Spanish if you're hoping to spend significant time here. On the flip side of that, being a native English speaker can be a huge advantage here for finding a job, as teaching English is one of the few opportunities where locals are not prioritized over foreigners. Similarly, the University of Zaragoza is a draw for many people who come to work as teachers and lecturers. As far as a visa to live in Zaragoza, it works the same way as it does in the rest of Spain, where non-EU citizens can get work visas through their employers or can apply for temporary Spanish residency under another category. If you complete five years of temporary residency, you can apply for long-term residency, and after five more years of that, apply for citizenship. The cost of living in Zaragoza is a bit less expensive than other big Spanish cities, which is most visible in the housing prices. A one-bedroom apartment in Zaragoza city center goes for about $660 per month, and a downtown three-bedroom is around $1,200 per month. Compare that to Madrid, for example, where a one-bedroom would be about $1,100 and a three-bedroom around $1,800. Property prices are similarly skewed. 
The price per square meter in Saragossa City Center is generally around $4,400, and a place further out would have a rate of $2,500. In Barcelona, the downtown price per square meter is about $5,620, and the suburban cost is around $3,630. These differences can really add up and make Zaragoza a pretty budget-friendly option. Outside of housing prices, Zaragoza is pretty similar to other Spanish cities and the basics are generally only slightly cheaper than that in other big cities. For example, a meal at an inexpensive restaurant costs around $13 and a mid-range bottle of wine goes for a little over $5 or so. In Barcelona, that would be about $16 and $6, so not that massive of a difference. Grocery store staples are also pretty reasonably priced here, with a liter of milk going for about a buck and a loaf of bread costing you around 85 cents. That makes it pretty affordable to enjoy the delicious food the region is known for, whether you're eating out or you're getting local ingredients and cooking it yourself. The best place to find produce and other local goods is the Mercado Central, a beautiful neoclassic building in the heart of the old town. Zaragoza has a wonderful collection of incredible cuisine, so you can't go wrong with dishes like Aragon suckling lamb or pollo al chilindron, especially paired with local wine. Zaragoza is a city rich with historical monuments, folkloric traditions, and fantastic food. So it really sounds like the whole package, but what did we think when we explored it ourselves? All right, so let's talk about this. Zaragoza, or you know, I say Zaragoza, Josh says... Zaragoza. <laughs> I'll say it the English way, you can say it the Spanish way. Yeah. Um, I really like the area. I think that it's not too massive of a city where it's overwhelming, yeah. but it also feels like a city. Yes, I think this is a city that I feel pretty conflicted about. Oh, okay. um, as we were filming for you, uh, I walked around the city a ton, and I, I feel like I... I Downtown wise, I feel like I saw like every nook and cranny, yeah. uh, which can be a turn on or a turn off, <laughs> yeah. depending on how, how you feel about nooks and crannies. <laughs> um, okay. I, I saw, like I said, I saw the good and the bad. Uh -huh. um, definitely down towards some of the more modern shopping malls, it felt more like my pace okay. in terms of um, architectural style, cleanliness, age demographic of people there. But that's Maybe more like real the life stuff. socioeconomic uh, levels of, of people. Okay. Yeah. So like in the historic city center, I did find it to be pretty local in terms of you had locals living there while tourists were kind of meandering the streets. Because um, there's like these small little alleyways. So that's where the locals, they live in the small alleyways, but then you find that tourists just kind of, yeah, find themselves in some of those little areas. Yes. So there is that kind of that mixing. Uh, but I wouldn't want to be in those regions as a resident of the city. I agree. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I mean, there's ni nice parts in the sense that some of it's pedestrian only, which is good. There is like beautiful architecture that's very different that, you know, obviously UNESCO World Heritage, some of like the basilica and such is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But living down there, I feel like it would be very touristy and then maybe just not as convenient for everyday life for things like grocery stores and, and just feeling like you're living there. So that is true. But if you get a little outside then it's not as bad, but it depends on what district you're at. And I did notice they did a, a pretty good job with uh, having green spaces, some of the, the neighborhoods, and playgrounds, which is obviously really important for us in the stage of life that we're in. Yeah, absolutely. So there's an area just south of the historic city center, kind of along the river, right? Um, we walked through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It felt a little more suburban, which I think... For me, this stage of life, I'd rather be in a little bit more of an urban setting. But if you like kind of a, a slower paced life in a more suburban setting, that area would be great. Um, as far as we could research and find, that area is also a, a little cheaper in terms of rent. Mm -hmm. So it could, be, it could be nice. If you want a car, there's plenty of parking in that area too. I would not suggest having a car living in downtown because it is rough to yeah, park, it, it, um, unless your apartment driving. comes with a parking yeah, space. Yeah, that's true. If you have, if you have something that, uh, like a garage that's underneath or something mm -hmm. that a lot of them are made with, but it would be hard, just the, the narrow streets, the, the people, the you know, pedestrian-only areas, so it would be hard in the, in the downtown area. Zaragoza is interesting because it's a beautiful Spanish city. It's one of the bigger ones, but it has a very different feel to a Madrid or Barcelona like we're sure. doing some comparisons with. Let me make a comparison there. So both or all three, maybe I should say, uh, cities will get tourists. However, um, there's such a blend between the tourism that happens in, in Madrid and Barcelona with the local population 
and maybe I shouldn't even say local population, residents. So that's foreign and Spanish alike. There's such a blend that I think you might get used to it and it maybe it does feel overwhelming. However, in Zaragoza, in Zaragoza, <laughs> it is, I imagine that it would get very annoying when the influx of foreigners come in, influx of tourists come in to that city because yeah. there's not a ton of space in that tourist zone. So if you're living there, it might be exhausting. The other thing is there are a ton of good restaurants in that area. They're all like a bit higher priced. So if you're living there, oh, are yeah. you actually going to those restaurants? Are you paying the additional price? Are you kind of, you know, fighting with the, the tourists to get your spot at a restaurant? I don't know. I'd be fascinated to know by a local's perspective. I don't think I would. That's kind of standard though, when you live in a place that tends to draw more tourists, the prices of restaurants and such go up. Mm -hmm. There were some really nice shops as well. Um, I thought the shopping was really good in that area, in the old town um, as well. But yeah, it probably wouldn't be the best to live around there. It would, it would just, maybe you'd always feel like you're a tourist and just kind of, yeah, like having an elbow and such with, with tourists. So, but there are other livable places. And there are some fancy like posh areas of the city as well that uh, those of you who are posh and fancy <laughs> would I think really enjoy because uh, Price-wise, it's not super high. You're getting to live in Spain, um, so that's nice. If you don't want kind of the city crush of Madrid or of Barcelona, it could be a good option. And those areas had a lot of greenery, I thought, mm -hmm. like trees that covered, um, that, you know, covered the sunshine and such. So I thought those areas, they felt really nice because um, of the greenery, parks and everything. Heat. Let's talk about heat. Yeah. Heat could be... Uh, potentially soul crushing <laughs> when you know you get the really, really hot days in August. So that would be something to take into consideration if you wanted to move really anywhere in this region of Spain that's kind of landlocked. Uh, it gets very hot in the summers and you could do what the Spanish do and go out. Leave, leave, leave the city. Yeah, that's when, why August is a big travel month for people. Yeah, when we lived in Madrid, it was it was very noticeable when these hot days, these hot periods were coming, and people had already scheduled their their holidays, and they would just take off and they would go to the coast or they would go visit um, countries further north. They'd go to Ireland, places <laughs> like that, and they would just escape the heat. Really makes sense. Definitely mm -hmm. makes sense. All right, so I think we're at that time. Yes. You want to explain what that time is? Yeah. Would you expat that? And it just means that would you want to live there for like medium term, not long term, like fully putting roots down and living there the rest of your life. But would you want to expat Zaragoza? I would say no, I wouldn't. I liked it. I would visit again, but I don't think I would want to live there. I think if I'm going to be in Spain, I'd rather be in a different Spanish city. So I think that it's right for some people, but it's not right for me. What would you say? No, I would not expat Zaragoza. I think that there are other places that are nicer to live. Uh, if a job took me there, I wouldn't necessarily cry. Yeah. But okay. I would not go there out of my own like free will. Yeah, if we if could you choose. Will. But yeah. that's true. If a job takes you there, it'll be okay. We could survive a year or two. Yeah. Yeah, it would not be the hardest thing we've done. No. Yeah. And if you want to compare Zaragoza with a different Spanish city, because we did a little bit of that in this video, then check that out right here. Now, let's get moving. Bye. Bye.